You're listening to the Four Phase Cycle Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Alex and Megan of Zesty Ginger. If you're looking to naturally balance hormones and learn how to work with your body instead of against it, you've definitely come to the right place. As a duo of an integrative MD and a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and best friends, we use the four phases of the female cycle in combination with functional lab work and mindset practices to transform the lives of the women we work with. We also have a whole lot of fun along the way. If you're new around here, it's best to start with season one before jumping around and plan to roll up your sleeves. Showing up for ourselves and enjoying our lives is what good health is all about. Just a quick reminder though, this information is not intended to diagnose, manage, or treat disease always consult with your doctor before making changes. Hello, hello, lovely humans. This is Alex. I'm here for a solo podcast today. I hope that you are having a phenomenal day. And today we are going to talk about something that we don't normally talk about, which is mercury retrograde. But I will link it back to the cycle. And part of the reason that I want to make this wanted to make this podcast episode is that Mercury retrograde and a lot of the astrology things are really common topics that people talk about in the general like health space and spirituality sort of self development work that Megan and I really love to do. Obviously you hear us talking about a whole lot of things that are outside of the usual kind of conventional model and things. And we still really like to look at everything as a potential framework, right? These are suggestions for making sense of our lives rather than an absolute that we live by and therefore it becomes a question of how do we want to interact with something and recently I feel like because it's been mercury retrograde and there's a whole bunch of other planets retrograde and there's a lot of people feeling a lot of different things and of course as humans like I said we are meaning making machines so many of us are looking to make sense of our world and for many of us, there's a drive to figure out what is it that I can blame or what is it that can explain what is causing me to be the way that I am being right now, right? And there's lots of very helpful things about that, in my opinion. There's, for example, human design is something that Megan and I really love as a framework to look at what makes someone tick and we love understanding more about ourselves and yet we do not use human design as a way to pigeonhole ourselves into a box right I'm not like oh yeah I'm this way because I'm a projector and oh that's how projectors are right like that is not really the takeaway that I generally go with now are there components to being a projector that I very much identify with and they are ways that I am choosing to be and live and to reinforce that and of course when it comes to that really helpful to have a framework and so all of this stuff it's really interesting to look at and include and sort of think about and whatever call you make some people are just not into certain topics some people are this uh, podcast episode is not actually about astrology, but rather the type of things that we come across in our world that we give meaning to, right? So with Mercury retrograde, it happens multiple times a year. So three to five times a year, there's a planet, you know, it does its thing, it goes retrograde. And every time it happens, it seems like I'm seeing people talk about it online and they explain all the technology snafus and kind of how they're feeling with that and as I've watched over time 
I used to sort of get looped into that, like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of saying it too. And then more recently, I started being like, this is an interesting thing that collectively we have started being like, well, you can't do anything at this time, or of course things are going to be like this, and, you know, this is going to happen, so you might as well not do X, Y, Z, right? There's a lot of, like, decision-making of now I am at the mercy of this and therefore I will change my behavior to be whatever it is ABC right in response to XYZ and I just kept mulling it over because it felt like there was something that didn't jive right with it and then it hit me <laughs> where I was like wow this is the same discussion that we see women have around their periods and actually the you know, having their cycle the week of phase one when they're having their period, there's a lot of talk in our society of like, I have my period, therefore, I will have X, Y, Z, this is what I'll experience, this is what my life is like, this is what my energy will be like, and many people do the thing, and I used to be like this, Megan and I used to be like this, both of us, is that we had learn that exact same response where you get your period and you're like, oh, no. Like, ugh, now I have my period, right? And then you don't have your period and you go back to doing exactly what you were doing before, ignoring that that ever happened. And then all of a sudden I just started really seeing this is the exact same thing we are doing with stuff like Mercury retrograde, right? We get to this point and you're like, ugh. I guess it's Mercury retrograde. This is what I'll do. And then when it's done, we all go back to being like, yeah, everything's great, except for many of us are really unhappy, not only in, internally in our lives, but also looking around going, I don't super love what is happening right now. There's an awful lot of fear and division and hate and all of that that we are also seeing. And so it's starting to make so much sense that we have the option to look at things that are cyclical in nature as normal variation that we can participate in to get the good gifts and the, the magic out of the same way that we can use phase one of our cycle, right? Our brains are very interconnected at that time. We were pulling on more information than we generally have easy access to, right? And that's why Megan and I talk about doing planning, introspection, asking yourself, where is my heart at? Where is the path of my heart, right? What is, am I being drawn to? What makes me the happiest? What gives me the most fulfillment? What brings me the most joy? And beginning to move in those directions, right? And that is a very different response to having your period than it is being like, oh, all right, well, now I'm going to be tired and I'm going to want the snacks and I'm going to want to sit on the couch and uh, I guess I can't go, you know, do whatever it is I wanted for my business or for my kids, right? Rather than getting there and be like, ah, yes, this event is reminding me that this is the way that I can participate within this season of time to draw strength and wisdom and clarity from that. And then I bring that into the phases that follow. And I think it's my sense is that things like Mercury retrograde, our experience of them then is kind of the same thing where instead of expecting things to break or expecting things, we are not necessarily waiting for those things to happen. And if they happen, that's fine. But it is the actual utilization of that time period to say how can I get the most out of this so this is you know like I said this is not an astrology podcast in that I'm not the expert of the best thing to do in mercury retrograde but if we can see cyclical things in our lives like this especially when they are so consistent right 18 periods or sorry 13 periods a year and if mercury retrograde three times a year 
for six weeks at a time is 18 weeks out of a 52 week year. That's a significant period of time if we are to truly believe that this is when we are disempowered by a force outside of ourselves and act as such, right, from that place of being disempowered, then it's a very similar look at what are we making things mean and is it really that we are dealt a crappy hand at that time or with that event going on or is it simply just a period of time where we are invited to do things in a different way while still standing in our own strength power and clarity on what we need the most right doesn't that sound like a very different experience of potentially the exact same events that you had before but you your participation and your relationship to them will still determine what it all plays out as is it going to be working in your favor or is it a period of time that you're going to lose and nothing's going to happen and you're just going to be frustrated that now you you know can't move projects forward it's mercury retrograde or oh yeah i can't do this because i have my period we get to appreciate the invitation right like this is not me saying yeah you have your period and you're like no i want to go run a marathon it's not the exclusion of the event that's happening Right. This is not saying I'm going to ignore it because if it's happening, it's happening. It's not like the ocean is like, nah, just today, no tides, right? Like for the, for the most part, there's a flow to the stuff and we may not get the most out of opting out of it, right? Ignoring something that's happening, like trying to plant stuff in winter, we generally don't do because we're like that's not the time to be doing that so it is it ends up not being one or the other right but rather a an honoring of what's happening and still asking how can I get the most out of it for my own benefit and some component of that will look like us standing in our own power as well. Again, not at the expense of so much that we ignore it and therefore don't get the magical tidbits out of it, but still not so much that we are like, whatever happens, happens. Guess we're in this phase now. This is where I throw up my hands. So those are my thoughts around that. It's really important to sometimes check in with ourselves about this kind of stuff because, like I said, I was just kind of watching this stuff and it was seeping in, right? It was probably impacting me, but I didn't quite make sense out of it. And so my experience of it was fluctuating with whatever momentum I had going on when it came to the like Mercury retrograde stuff. And I had already more consciously chosen how I would like to interact with my cycle. And I obviously, you know, we have this podcast, have committed to and am devoted to the idea of like, I will use that as my superpower rather than what I grew up with being like, ah, oh, just so you just have to get through the week and then you go back to your life. Right. And we always joke about the like tampon commercials and the Midal commercials because they're all like, playing tennis and like giving a meeting in a business suit like you know it is kind of the opposite of like just ignore that it's happening or if it's so bad you just go into your cave and don't worry about it till you come out and what if now as, as I'm kind of thinking through all of this like what if I and we collectively looked at all the things that have seasons and asked ourselves rather than continuing or participating in some sort of narrative set out by whoever set it by, how can we begin to shift it into a place that reinforces our authority and our capacity to choose what we want our life experience to go like 
understanding that sometimes we get to choose the thing that happens and sometimes we get to choose the response and sometimes we will choose both, right? And all of that is completely fine exactly the way that it is. It does mean that then as we get to choose that kind of stuff, then we are really much more in the driver's seat of everything. And then even if something happens that we're like, I didn't like how this turned out, we still retain the knowledge and have the knowledge of that means I can choose again and create that. That is not to say that that means that, that how, that's how it will always be. So hopefully that resonates for you. I would love to hear what you think. If you screenshot this and share with me your thoughts on Instagram, I would absolutely love to hear how you conceptualize this, what your relationship is, even, you know, it doesn't even matter if we're talking about astrology or whatever. What is the relationship to the cycle? Is it changing for you? Are you seeing how much more you can get out of that experience? as it's happening by looking at it in a different way. I would love to continue this conversation because as I hear what's going on for you, I will continue to have podcast episodes that address it because I think this is a very, very common theme, right? And it's expressed in many different ways in our culture in different topics and different things that people are interested in. And I would love to continue to explore that in this, uh, in this podcast. So thank you so much. I'm really excited to hear from you. I'm sending you so much love and we'll see you soon. Thanks for coming out to hang with us on the podcast. It is our goal to transform the way women are treated in healthcare and we need your help. We need your help to get the word out. We have a lofty goal of 1 million downloads. And we know that as this podcast grows, we're going to be able to reach more women, get more amazing speakers for you, and bring the most cutting edge information. If you found these pod classes helpful, please take a moment to text five women you know the link to the series. We appreciate your help so much. Can't wait to see you next time.